Alright, so have you seen a keyboard that looks like a spaceship with rockets and stuff? Well, the keyboard that we're taking a look at today is probably the closest thing to that. What we have here is the Kiss Me Lunar 01 mechanical keyboard, a keyboard that is currently on Indiegogo right now that offers a novelty spaceship-like design language featuring a Nodge visualizer bar that also doubles as a phone or tablet holder. It also has a nice complementing set of keycaps, tri-mode connectivity, gasket mount construction, a bunch of sound dampening material inside, and most uniquely, a couple of rocket fidget spinners. It looks like a toy at first glance, but let me tell you right now, this keyboard actually sounds and feels good out of the box. In this video, we're also going to tear it apart so that you can have a better understanding of what I just told you about. With that being said, let's get into it. So starting off with the packaging, you can definitely tell the attention to detail Kismi has done on their product. By the way, aside from the keyboard, we also have a wrist rest right here with the same packaging design and a couple of rocket fidget spinners, which as you'll see later, are really quite satisfying to play with. Upon opening the box, the first thing that you'll notice is a sort of blueprint of the keyboard on the foam cover, which is definitely a plus for detail. Next, we have the user manual, a set of holographic stickers, the Kiss Me Lunar 01 keyboard itself, and an accessory box. Inside the accessory box, we have a wire switch and keycap puller, a metal pry tool, the 2.4 GHz USB dongle with an included USB Type A to Type C adapter, some replacement silicon gaskets, and a nice white gold cable. Now, the wrist rest that comes along with the keyboard is actually pretty good. It features a super soft gel cushion and is covered with a nice to the touch fabric. It also perfectly matches the design of the keyboard. It even has a sticky non slip bottom surface, which is nice. Now, the rocket fidget spinners are also quite cool. Inside the box, we have a couple of LR44 batteries and the rocket fidget spinner itself. It looks like a toy because it actually is a toy. <laughs> it features a touch or movement sensor that makes it light up whenever you start spinning it and as per specifications, it can spin freely for up to a minute. I'd say it's really satisfying to play around, especially if you're a fidgety type of person. Now moving on to the actual keyboard, at first look and touch, although it is made mostly out of plastic, it actually has a decent weight to it of around almost 1.3 kilograms. It does flex a bit but not too concerning and overall, the build quality is pretty decent. As for the design, as I pointed out earlier, it features a spaceship-like aesthetic with a bunch of accents that mimic the design of a spaceship partnered with a matching keycap set. Other than that, we have a 10 keyless layout here with 87 keys, a full nav cluster, dedicated arrow keys, function rows, and alpha numeric keys. We also have some LED indicators here for caps lock, charging, and connectivity modes, and a volume knob that also doubles as a control knob for the audio visualizer beside it. Looking at the front side, as you can tell, the keyboard features a rounded edge, high profile case, which means the switches are completely hidden from sight. Flipping it on the left side, you'll see the cavity for the magnetic mount of the rocket fidget spinner. The case is also a bit angled for a more comfortable typing experience, partnered with the KDA profile of the keycap set. More on that later. Flipping it on the back side, here we have the switch for the tri mode connectivity option and the switch between Windows and Mac OS or Android and iOS. Besides that, we have the USB Type C port. Turning it all over at the bottom, we have 5 rubber feet, 4 flip out stands, 2 of which are shorter, and all of which have rubber tips as well. We can also see here a bunch of design language that resembles the aesthetics of a spaceship. Going back up top on both sides of the keyboard, you can easily attach the two rocket fidget spinners, and thanks to the substantially strong magnets, it's not going anywhere. Using strong new dime U magnets here is a very good idea. You can flick the spinner as hard as you want without worrying about it flying around, which is awesome. Now up top, we have an audio visualizer, and I guess this keyboard has a hidden microphone for that. And in case you don't like this idea, you can also remove the cover and all of its components and use the cavity as a phone or tablet holder. And to top it all off, the bottom is also compatible with Legos if you're into that. I don't have any, so unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate that here. Now the keycaps are made out of durable PBT plastic with the sublimated characters, which means these legends and designs are pretty much permanent and won't shine easily over time. It has a thickness of around 1.5 to 1.6 mm, which at least for my standard is decent enough. The keycaps also feature the KDA profile, which is a sort of hybrid between the Cherry profile and the Sculpted SA profile. As you can tell, the height is relatively short and comfortable while sharing the same sexy Sculpted profile of SA. In terms of the switches, this keyboard features Gatron G Pro switches, which are already pre lubed out of the box and offers some significant improvements compared to its predecessors. Simply put, very good out of the box switches. The stabilizers are also made by Gateron and are also preloaded out of the factory. I'd say it sounds and feels pretty decent too and might not need further modifications depending on your standards. 
And lastly, before we tear this apart, this keyboard features south-facing hot swappable sockets that supports both 3-pin and 5-pin switches. So no problems whatsoever regardless of what switches and keycaps you'll want to use. Overall, the construction is pretty decent and the design is definitely unique and probably a niche especially in this relatively small hobby. Now, some of you will probably say that this keyboard looks like a toy more than something a mechanical keyboard enthusiast would fancy. And I get that. We're used to having custom mechanical keyboards with a design language that is quite common with simple but sleek design, elegant accents, solid build quality and all that, and that's perfectly fine. But I know for a fact that some people prefer themed keyboards like this, as I've seen desk setups fully committed to a particular theme, and I think this is where this keyboard will fit in. With that out of the way, let's continue by tearing this keyboard apart so that you can have an idea about its internal construction and why it sounds and feels pretty good out of the box for a keyboard that looks like a toy. By the way, what I have here is a prototype and I'll try my best to point out all the things that they are going to improve with the production units. To be honest, opening this keyboard requires some serious courage, especially if it's your first time since we're dealing with plastic here. Around the keyboard, we have some slots conveniently labeled as system access where you will insert the metal pry tool and gently but firmly pry the clips away. Don't worry as this polycarbonate plastic is quite durable. To be honest, I've already opened this keyboard at least twice while figuring out how to open it properly before filming this one since I want to show it to you as good as possible. And as far as I can tell, I can't see any significant damage. You can also use a plastic pry tool like this if you have one. Now after prying the clips away, gently lift off the bottom cover like so. Looking at the bottom cover, we have a bunch of porn gaskets all around for a total of 14 which you can also replace using the included silicone gaskets. These porn gaskets are extremely soft as you can tell. If you're not familiar, these gaskets will prevent direct plastic to plastic contact which will improve both the sound quality and feel of the keyboard. Now one improvement they are planning to add here is a paperboard to prevent static electricity. Next here we have the two 2000mAh of battery which is sort of just dangling around here. Removing these batteries will void your warranty as indicated by these stickers. What you can do if you really want to remove the silicon dampener is just slide them in through the hole like so. Gently of course as to not damage the batteries. Here we have a quite dense silicon dampener that also reduces the overall hollow and reverb sounds of the keyboard. Of course I don't care about the warranty so I'll just remove these batteries. I gotta say I can't help but appreciate this attention to detail even the batteries have a spaceship like design. Another good thing about this keyboard is that the switches and USB Type-C port is located on a separate daughter board, which means it is safer and won't get damaged that easily compared to when it's integrated with the board itself. If you need to remove the PCB and plate combo, you'll have to disconnect and remove the daughter board first which will also void your warranty, so be careful. Looking closer at the daughter board, you'll see the pogo pins that connect the audio visualizer PCB to the power and the main PCB. Next, remove the volume knob so that we can safely lift the top cover like so. Now aside from the porn gaskets on the bottom case, we also have some silicon gaskets around the top cover for a total of 14 gaskets as well. We can also see here the strong neodymium U magnets for the rocket fidget spinners. Now another thing that they can improve here is the implementation of the cover of the audio visualizer. Right now it is using adhesive tape which as you can imagine can wear out over time. I feel like a magnetic cover is a better option here and that you don't even need to use the pry tool which can also damage the cover. Now after removing the cover, you also have to be very careful about removing these plastic platforms so as to not damage the SMD LEDs and the PCB underneath it. While I was already aware about this, I still managed to damage one of the SMD LEDs. I admit that was my fault and I've read that they're planning on improving the mold to prevent this but I also hope they can improve the design by adding another layer of cover on the SMD LEDs. Looking at the PCB, we can see the power connectors that connect this to the pogo pins on the daughter board. Like I said earlier, the bottom of the cavity has some LEGO mounts for attaching LEGO figures aside from using this as a phone or tablet holder. Looking at the PCB, the hot sub sockets are of course made by Gatoron. Now if you also want to see how this PCB and plate combo is constructed, you'll have to remove the keycaps and switches. As you can tell, these Gatoron stabilizers are already pre-lubed out of the box and the amount is quite substantial as well. The bottom of the stems are also fairly flat so no issues here. By the way, I was advised that these Gatron screw stabilizers will be changed to all white. After removing the screws that secure the plate to the PCB, we can now take a closer look at the plate made out of polycarbonate plastic. It is super flexible with some flex cuts all around which is fairly rare when it comes to pre-built keyboards. Next we have another silicon dampener here again to minimize the hollow sound and reverb. Aside from that, we also have an EVA switches sheet here that apparently is glued on the PCB. This also helps with the overall sound signature of the keyboard. 
Now, technically, this keyboard supports plateless build, but as far as I know, it is ideal for soldered PCB for the stability of the switches, which they are also planning on offering in the future. And that's about it for the teardown experience, and while we're at it, I added some masking tape for that popular tape mod and replaced the porn gaskets with silicon just to have a bit of difference when we do our sound test later. Overall, while the teardown process is a bit tedious at first, it's actually fairly easy and straightforward. By the way, the cover for the audio visualizer actually has a plastic film and they are planning on adding a pull tab here for quick removal. As for the other features of this keyboard, you can change the lighting effects of the audio visualizer by pressing the volume knob, toggle the lighting modes of the keyboard by pressing Fn plus delete, change the color by pressing Fn plus end, and adjust brightness and speed by pressing Fn plus the arrow keys. Aside from that, this keyboard has three connectivity options, 2.4 GHz for lower latency especially for gaming, Bluetooth for multi-device connections up to three devices, and wired mode. As for the typing experience, I'd say for a pre-built keyboard, it's really good. The typing feel is fairly soft thanks to the combination of polycarbonate plate, silicon dampeners, and gaskets all around. The pre-loop Gateron G Pro yellow switches and Gateron stabilizers are also pretty decent, and honestly, I don't think this keyboard requires any further modifications. I like the combination of the lightweight switches and the overall soft but not too flexible characteristics of this keyboard. Now before we end this video, here's a quick sound test for you guys. As of the time of making this video, I cannot find any software for this keyboard, unfortunately. Now, while this particular keyboard that I have here is just a prototype, I'd say it's around at least 80% ready for prime time. I just hope they can improve the build quality and design of the audio visualizer. Other than that, at the end of the day, will I recommend this? Yes and no. Yes for those people who are specifically looking after this particular space theme. And if you fancy any sort of fidgeting, as this rocket fidget spinner is super satisfying to play around with. The audio visualizer for me isn't that necessary and it's just there for that extra bling but overall, a pretty novelty kind of keyboard. And no, if you're not a fan of this niche design and want something that is more discreet and simple, there are other options out in the market. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Full disclaimer, Kiss Me provided this prototype so that I can share with you my honest thoughts in case you're planning on backing this up. They'll see this video at the same time as you. You can check the links below if you're interested. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you appreciate this video, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.